G'day, welcome to another episode of Country Life on the Coast. My name is Sean, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about on site sewerage systems. So, we're currently going through the process of having to install a new. Uh, advanced secondary wastewater treatment plant and this is because our existing septic system and the trenches with the gravel traps or gravel drains that we have have hit end of life they have to be replaced there's all these Australian standards you have to meet and so we're sort of learning the whole process as we go and so today what I want to do is just share what we've learnt and hopefully it will assist you. It will vary on your own property compared to ours, depending on the soil types you've got. It may change depending on your council requirements. It's meant to be as per an Australian standard from what I can understand, but I've also heard that different councils interpret things differently or have different rulings. So basically what I'm gonna do is talk to you about and explain how what we've got had to go through and how it is for our property and our situation but I'm hoping that from that there's a lot of information that you can learn from and take and basically help you along the process as well we looked out there trying to find information and, and the way this is supposed to work and we couldn't find it so that's why I'm sharing it and hopefully it will help you so the very first thing that needs to happen is you need to get a soil test done If you've seen a previous video we put up was actually getting the soil test and in that sort of explain different soil tests of what you can do one of the things that the soil test will do is do a wastewater report and I sort of explained that in the video so I won't go into that detail now if you want to watch that video I'll put a link to it in the description below but basically the person that does the soil test is the person that will dictate what sort of system you can have and whether the irrigation system that you install is subsurface or surface irrigated so you can either have ones that dissipate in the ground itself and you don't ever see it or there's ones that will sprinkle and you'll have sprinkler heads and you know it will basically be like a, a watering system that you'll see now we went through that process had our soil test guy in he did it we took his word for it and you really have to trust these people you need to be able to have someone that you trust we assumed that the person we used was good and he gave us all the right information I have no way of knowing for sure we just had to take his word for it and then move forward so if you can find someone who other people recommend and they found really good it's probably a good way to, to use uh, to, to then find that person when you're talking with your soil test person you need to make sure that what they're allowing for caters for your future use as well because they have an area or the irrigation area is called a land application area and the size of that is dictated by how many bedrooms you have in your pro in your premises so for us we actually want to put a granny flat in in the future so we have to size the, the system to cater for our future use. And this is a, just a, another thing you need to work through and allow for. If you have a three bedroom house, I think the land application area for sprinklers like we need is 325 square meters. That, that's approximate. Um, there is a calculation that they will do and tell you exactly what it is, but I think that was the number. And if you're having a total of five bedrooms, then you need to have an area of 425 square meters for your land application area. So if you're buying a property or you know or your, your own property need to go down this path, you need to take into consideration how big your house is, the land application area, how big that will need to be. And then there is also all these offsets. You need to be 10 meters from the nearest neighbor's property say if the neighboring property is right um, close to their property boundary you need to have a minimum of 10 meters from that 
and you need to be 10 meters from your property, from your house, sorry. And you also then need to be, if from the land application area, if it slopes downhill to your property boundary, you need to be four meters away from that. Uh, there's other rules like you need to be two meters away from a driveway. So all of these clearances that you need around your land application area impact the use of that, air, of that land. So for us, a 425 square meter area that we need to have for our land application area, allowing for 10 meter offsets and four meters off one boundary and that sort of thing, we're almost losing like 1500 square meters of land. So it's a, it's a considerable amount of property that just the land application area for the irrigation system takes. And our soil test um, company that we used, they recommended that we would have to go, the, the sprinklers, the irrigation bit. So we've sort of been going down this path and learning all of this and realizing that, you know, the, it's a massive impact on, on your property, on what you can do with it, because you can't grow fruits and vegetables in that area either. It's basically, you need to keep it as grass. So just a key component, key thing to remember. Once you've agreed with the person doing the soil test and uh, found the area for the land application area and also where your tanks and that will go for the system itself because there's, you know, that there will be a tank or two um, that all your wastewater will go into and be some form of treatment there. And then it will get either pumped or gravity fed to your land application area. So they can be in two different places and that's what's happened in our place. Once all that is worked out, the person that does the soil test will do a report up for you and will outline all the, the results that they've found and do a drawing up showing where your land application is, has to be situated. And in our case, they have where the sprinklers need to be, all that sort of thing. It's very controlled. It has to be exactly right because that the, again, for us, the council inspectors will check that that is installed in the right location and everything is correct. So once you've done all that, the second point to do is then to go and get quotes for this system installation. So there are different companies and you can just Google them. That's what I started do doing. And I actually, I did some research first before um, we actually engaged the soil tester just so that I knew what systems were out there. And I sort of looked at the pros and cons of each. So once you've got your report, you can give that to these different companies, whichever ones you find um, suit your requirements and they will give you a quote on it. And what the research I did found that there's, there's different systems out there that they work differently. Some have aerators in them, so they have more pumps in them. Um, I was looking for something that basically had the least amount of moving parts. I sort of think that if you can put a system in that doesn't have pumps, because basically pumps are gonna fail after a period of time, and especially if they've got to run all the time or, or quite often, um, they're going to fail and so what that will mean is you need to replace them every three to five years you might get longer out of them but it's a moving part so I was looking for things that or I was looking for a system that I didn't have to replace pumps with had minimal moving parts and in the end the system that we're going to install has only one pump and that is from to take it from the tanks up to the land application area for irrigation. So from there, you'll get your quotes from the company and then you can choose which company you wanna have the installation. The third step of the process is then you need to put your application into your local council. And with that is a copy of that report that the soil tester has given you. And in our case, and I think, again, I think it's Australian standard that you do, is a form one that you need to fill out and submit with your application. Now there's a fee obviously to be paid to council for that and they will then you know, move forward and hopefully um, approve your, your report and you know, the system that you're looking at putting in. One of the other steps that council will do 
is, or in our case, this is what they did anyway, is that they sent someone out here, walked all over the property, had a look, took lots of photos, took a heap of measurements, made sure that the land application area that we had designated was going to be suitable, made sure that it was set back from the houses, all of those issues we talked about, the council representative or council inspector checked on all of that. So after all of that, council should hopefully stamp approved on your documents and then send a letter of approval or some form of um, approval document to yourself. We received a, a letter from council saying, that, yep, this is approved. And it was also subject to a number of conditions. So um, again, inspections that have to happen during the installation of it, this sort of thing. So just be prepared that everyone follows an Australian standard and then council can also put other conditions on to suit whatever they need or deem necessary. And I'm not saying that is a bad thing. They're doing their job to make sure that it's all right. It just seems quite onerous uh, from what I've seen. Anyway, that is what it is. So once that is approved by council, so the next step is to go back to the people uh, that you're buying the system from, tell them that you've got the approvals, send all those documents to them, the council approval documents, and then they can plan to do their installation. It should run fairly smoothly, um, hopefully, all going well. Those companies are set up to just install systems. So they should know their process quite well. You need to make sure that there's ample space around for them because of, you know, they dig big holes to put the, the tanks in, that sort of thing. So you've got to have a space to either get rid of that soil or someone to take it away. But those companies, I believe, are pretty adept with that, know exactly what's required and should help walk you through that process as well. One of the key things in all of this is communication. So the company that you're dealing with that's going to install your system, you've got to be upfront, honest with them. And if they're saying things that you don't understand, ask questions, make sure you're on the same page, make sure you understand what's going on or how it's going to work or what the, the work they need to do is. All of those things you, you need to be clear on before you sign any contracts with them and before you go too far down, down the path really. The last thing you want to do is sign a contract with them, yep, start moving ahead and then all of a sudden find that there's things that they haven't allowed for or they were expecting you to do. Again, they should be pretty clear with it. Like I said, they do that all the time. That, that most of these companies, that is their main job is that they just install these systems. So, but again, just sharing the information. We've so far had a good run with everything, haven't had any real issues but communication is always the key in any of these sorts of things. So that fourth step is then they'll come and install their system. One thing, again, from our experience, one thing is that they don't actually connect your house up to their system. So you need to engage another plumber, a different plumber to come and do that. I guess that's because they're the experts with installing their systems and not house plumbing. I don't know the ins and outs and why they, they do it this way, but that's what they focus on. Well, that, this is from our experience. The people will install their wastewater treatment plant and then go, yep, this is where your inlet comes in and your plumber will connect that up. So you'll need to be in touch with a plumber early on as well to, to engage them, to talk about what's required, make sure they're okay with where everything's being situated. And that then is the final and the fifth step of this is to get your plumber to come and connect from your house to the new wastewater treatment plant. Again, maybe council inspections are required. Um, it, it will depend on your personal situation, what you are. So that's our run through the main, sort of the main five steps of what's involved. I hope you found this interesting and informative. I know it's been a big learning curve for us um, and I'm trying to just share that information with you. And hopefully if you have to go down this path, this information has just sort of made it simpler for you, easier, 
and hopefully with no real headaches for you because that's the key is just getting this stuff done it has to be done and trying to just not make it difficult for everyone so anyway well that's all we've got time for in this episode thank you so much for watching please hit that like and subscribe button and we'll catch you next time god bless